Okay, this is chapter 8, the physical geography of Latin America. So we started the school year by talking about Merrillville. Then we expanded out and we started looking at the United States, the geography of the United States. And then we just recently moved north and looked at our very similar neighbors to the north. Now, I suspect that you probably already knew a lot of that stuff that we talked about just by virtue of being American or living in the United States for a while. You've probably come across a lot of that stuff before. Now we're going to start moving farther and farther away from the familiar United States. We're going to turn south first and start looking at Latin America. So that's what we're doing now. Chapter 8 is all about the physical geography of Latin America. Section 1 covers the land, the rivers, and the natural resources of this place. So we're going to go through that. First off, Latin America is kind of defined by elevation. There are huge numbers of mountains and plateaus in Latin America. These mountains are caused by its location along the Pacific Rim of Fire, which starts in Terra del Fuego and it goes all the way around the Pacific and back down past China and Japan. This is an area that's marked by large mountain ranges, but also volcanoes and earthquakes as the tectonic plates move around the Pacific. The mountains were created by these moving tectonic plates. In Middle America, one of the most important mountain ranges is called the Sierra Madres, and these surround the densely populated Mexican Plateau in central Mexico. In addition to the Sierra Madres, the Caribbean islands are part of an underwater mountain range which runs underneath the Caribbean Sea. And of course, the most famous of all, the Andes Mountains, which run along the spine of South America. The Andes Mountains are the longest mountain range in the world. It is made up of cordilleras, which are parallel mountain ranges that go one after another after another. In Peru and Bolivia, the cordilleras kind of split apart and they encircle an area known as the Altiplano, which means the High Plain. Now when we start moving across South America, we move out of the Andes Mountains and down. Here we find in Eastern South America, the broad plateaus and valleys. The most famous of this is called the Mato Grosso Plateau, and this is a plateau of forests and grasslands in the middle of South America, really at the heart of South America. Farther to the east, as you continue towards the Atlantic, is the Brazilian highlands, which rise into several different climate zones and then drop very suddenly to the Atlantic Ocean. This drop-off is called an escarpment, which is a steep slope that drops down into the ocean. So that's a very quick overview of the basic landforms of, of Latin America. Now we're going to look at some of the water systems. The most famous is the Amazon River, which I hope you've heard of. The Amazon River is the world's longest river, and actually, in, to in terms of volume, the total amount of water in the river is ten times the amount of water as is in the Mississippi. The second largest water system is the Paraná, Paraguay, and Uruguay rivers. This forms a very large water system that eventually drains into the Rio de la Plata estuary near Buenos Aires and Uruguay. River systems in Mexico and Central America, as opposed to South America, tend to be much smaller. The one exception to that is the Rio Grande River, which forms the border between the United States and Mexico. Another important waterway is the man-made Panama Canal. This allowed, once it was completed, it allowed ships, instead of having to sail all the way around South America, to be able to cut across and get to the Pacific very easily, and this made shipping way easier for the United States and other places in the world. So those are the major rivers and water systems. Now let's switch to natural resources. Latin America is known for their access to rich natural resources like oil, natural gas, metals, precious metals, and minerals. A lot of the economies of the countries in Latin America are driven by these natural resources. Now, some Latin American countries have access to more types of these materials than others, which results in inequalities in wealth, but still, 
we've seen Latin American countries really exploiting these natural resources to benefit their country. The United States and other developed countries has also benefited by being able to trade for these natural resources. Unfortunately, Latin America, these countries themselves, often have struggled to industrialize and uh, effectively exploit these resources in their own country. And we see that's a big problem in Latin America. Okay, so let's switch gears now and talk about the climate and vegetation of Latin America. Latin America is shaped, because of all the mountains and plateaus, by elevation. Because of the many mountain ranges, Latin America has huge differences in elevation, which affect the climate and the vegetation of the places that are at different altitude levels. As you know, the higher up you go on a mountain or in a plateau, the cooler it gets. And also, there's less oxygen. So at the very top of Mount Everest, the tallest mountain, there's very, very little oxygen. People have to wear masks. Now, it's not quite that bad here, but there are a lot of really, really high mountain ranges that affect the climate. It's so common, in fact, that the locals have certain names for different altitudes and different climate regions that they find as they go up a mountain. At the base of the mountain is the land called the Tierra Caliente, which means hot land. That's kind of the normal temperature of whatever area they're, they're living at. As they continue up the mountain, they find the Tierra Templada, which is the temperate land. And this lies a little bit farther up the mountain and generally contains many forests of broad-leafed trees and evergreen trees. And also, the, you can still do a lot of farming in this area. It's not a, not a big issue. But as you continue to go up in altitude, as you continue to go up the mountain, you run into the Tierra Fria, which means the cold land. This has fewer and fewer and fewer trees, eventually becoming more of a grassland, with only a few evergreen trees spaced here and there. It's not a forest anymore, it's just one here, one over there, one over there. Very few crops can grow here, and it's generally used as more of a grazing land. And as you go even farther up the mountain, you come to the Puna region, which is a very cold grassland. Here, trees cannot survive. It's just too cold. There's not enough oxygen. Their roots cannot get through the frozen land. As you continue up the mountain, you get to the Tierra Helado, which is the frozen land. This area is so high up that it is frozen and cold and snowy all year round. Think of it as kind of like an ice cap region just on top of the mountain. When you come down from the mountains, there are a whole bunch of other climate regions that you will encounter in Latin America. One very common climate region is the tropical wet region. Tropical wet regions in Central America and South America, especially um, around the Amazon rainforest, which is the world's wettest tropical plain, and also on the Yucatan and in places in Central America. In these areas, trees, because of the abundance of water, grow very close together. They form a very dense canopy, or a dense layer of leaves that, that oftentimes will block out the sky. In addition to tropical wet regions, there are also tropical dry climate regions. These regions dominate areas of Mexico and Central South America. They have a wet season and a dry season. These areas have varying amounts of vegetation depending on how much rain they get year-round. Another important climate region is humid subtropical. These regions are common in southeastern South America. It was very common in this area to have very dense forests, many of which have since been cut down to make way for grasslands used for cattle and ranching. And then finally, there are, there are dry climates. The Atacama Desert in Chile is the world's driest hot desert. So we think of Antarctica is a desert, actually, and it's the driest one on Earth, but it's very cold. In Chile, the Atacama Desert is hot, obviously, and it is very dry. Some weather stations in this desert have never once, since they were constructed, experienced rain. That's how dry this place is. Additionally, parts of Mexico, Brazil, and South Central South America have very dry and steppe climates and have very sparse 
vegetation. So that covers chapter 8. It's a very quick overview of the physical geography of Latin America. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.